He made history in 2022 at Sonoma Raceway by becoming the first Mexican-born driver to win a NASCAR Cup Series race. We'll touch a little bit on that milestone, but more on his life away from the racetrack. I'm Julia Pique, and this is Open House, a track house production. Each week, we will connect with men and women from the worlds of sports, music, entertainment to uncover a side of them that you may not know. Welcome to Open House with Daniel Suarez, a guest that I happen to know quite well. You can do dice. I'm ready. Okay. You can do dice. <laughs> you see, you so that's Pepper. Is it pe this is the Peppery Pep. Peppery, we don't call her Pepper, we call her Peppery Pep. Peppery Pep. Pep. Or Pep. Pep. <laughs> this is Emma. She's the OG. She's OG. And uh, Nikki, who's our first cat, is. Uh, Where's the Nick Nick? She's missing in action. She's a little, a little bit more scared than, than this cat. I guess we'll start off with the question everyone wants to know and how we first met. How do you remember it being? Well, the very first time that we met was. Uh, well, a long time ago, uh, in 2012, that's, that's the first time, like if, you, if somebody asked me, hey, when did you meet Julia? I, I don't think about 2019, I think about back 2012. Me too. Um, and at the time, the picture I have of you is in the kitchen of, uh, of Nelson's His old house. Old house. Uh, you know, I remember that, I think there was a barbecue or something going on and and you were kind of like the, the good girl was organizing everything and everything. And you were in the kitchen preparing some stuff. And, and somehow with my 1.5% of English, I managed to go there and ask you if you need help. If you, need help. You, you told me to, to, to go away. I just kidding. You didn't say anything. Uh, maybe you did and I, I couldn't understand. You know, you. I don't even remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Like, I have, I have a picture of you in the kitchen. Yeah. I remember they had an island mm -hmm. and, and you were in the kitchen and you were working something that we we're going to have, I guess, that dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. That's, that's kind of like for, uh, you know, how I remember meeting you. I guess, I guess that was part one, right? Because mm -hmm. we lost touch or lost contact for, for a number of years after that, for like, what, seven years, just under seven years. And then we reconnected on social somewhere like end of 2018. Um, I remember adding you because I don't, I don't know how you popped up and I, I recognized who it was. Ah. And, and I thought, oh, I haven't seen Daniel in such a long time. So I followed you and then I, I made a comment on one of your pictures. And I remember exactly. Are you sent me a fire, no? I didn't send you any fire. <laughs> no, I, oh, I didn't send you a DM. I commented on your picture yeah. and I said, I was like, oh my God, Daniel, I haven't seen you in so long. So great to see like how, how well you've done and, and whatever. And, and that was it. And then started following each other. And then like a handful of months later, um, we actually got to see each other in Mexico City for the race of champions. And at the time I was working for motorsport.com and I went to cover the race and interviewed you and um yeah the rest is history an even better story than when we met was when i attended my first race i i remember landing in phoenix and i think it was a friday because it was qualifying day for you and i remember landing in phoenix like literally when qualifying had just ended so the first thing i did when i landed was i turned my phone on and i googled like nascar qualifying results and the first thing that popped up was a picture of you. And my first you know, instinct was, oh my God, he, he must have gone the pole. And I start scrolling <laughs> down and the headlines were like, fight erupts on pit road between uh, the 41 and, and, and McDowell. And I was like, oh my God, did, this guy's a you, hothead. <laughs> did you, I mean, honestly, the, in that moment, the, were, were you worried? I like, oh my God, this damn Mexican inspired people. I would people. say I was worried. <laughs> A little bit of a fight, it's kind of normal. Like, honestly, like, I fought in go I fought in NASCAR Mexico, I fought in... 
pretty much in every series I have been. Like, I feel like it's, it's, it's part of it. Like, when you are competitive and you are fighting for something and then you are working so hard and other people is as well and you have a dis disagreement, like, well, maybe I'm saying I fought and maybe it's not the right word, but like had like arguments yeah, and pushing each other and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, what happened in Phoenix that year was a little bit more than argument. I mean, uh, you went over I the wall to go talk to him. Yeah, then but you like put him down on the floor. Then you got pinned on the car. I mean, it was a little bit more than a heated argument. It was more than a heated argument. I wouldn't call it a fight though. Like in my mind, a fight is kind of like. If that's not a fight, I don't know what a fight is. Well, a fight, in my mind, a fight is more than putting somebody in the ground. Because, I mean, if that was a fight, the fight lasted three seconds. Doesn't matter. It was still a fight. Okay. I'm too good then. <laughs> no, because for me, a fight is when, when two people go at it for, for a little Babe, bit. Babe, it's a fight. It was a friendly fight. It was a fight. It was a, fr it was a nice fight. And then the next day... He asked me to be his girlfriend in the parking lot of a Walmart. Oh, uh, yeah. And I, I was like, well, I, I better I say yes, or he's going to tackle me to the ground <laughs> or something. A lot of people love racing. And racing is a very, very cool sport. To be in it, you have to make a lot of sacrifices. It, it becomes part of your life. And, and, and we just have like something good going where I understand you and I understand what it takes and and we're willing together to, to, to put in the work to but you 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 like racing you enjoy racing you 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 I mean in my mind there is there is uh there is people out there that they like more the the show mm -hmm. of racing mm -hmm. than the actual racing itself yeah. and and in my mind you are the kind of girl that you enjoy racing and, and you support me and and I feel like a lot has to do obviously with, with your family, you know, your dad and your your brothers and and that they are so involved in, in racing that uh, that's a big part of why you enjoy this because you, you've been watching this since you were a baby. For me it was different, you know, I, I wasn't watching racing when I was a baby. So I, I got to learn to like cars and racing. Yeah. So But you know more than racing I really, really, really enjoy NASCAR. Um, I've obviously I was introduced to it when Nelson started racing in 2010, 2011, and I just, you know, the proximity to to the action and being on the grid and and the racing itself and the whole atmosphere around the weekend. I've just I've always always loved it. I think NASCAR is like the coolest thing. So we're we're both from from different backgrounds. You come from Mexico, I come from Brazil and, and, and Europe. Um, was there a moment of culture shock when you moved to the US? Like things that you didn't expect or just, you know, a moment where you're like, wow, this is like really different. First few months that I moved to, to North Carolina, you know, to every, you know, I was meeting a lot of people, but I couldn't speak English, right? So to, I would say to most girls that I was meeting, let's say that you were introducing me to uh, whoever, you know, I was, I was uh, oh, how are you doing? A ki I'm sorry, man. And a kiss, mm -hmm. you know, like in Mexico and in Europe and in Brazil, it's, it's common, right? When you, when you are meeting someone. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So here it's not. Yeah. So I don't remember that, I remember that girl were like, holy crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know, you know, for me it was normal. So, it's just yeah. one thing that for some reason is just sticking in my mind. But, and in uh, Europe, like depending what country you're two, in. There's two, two kisses, there's two, right? No, in Holland, there's three. Oh my you God. go one, two, three. Why so many? Why so many? I don't know that I can be touchy touchy in Holland. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for, for a few months, you know, I was like, why oh, they look at me right where? Yeah. And, then, and then I found myself, I hey, man, yeah. like, that's not normal here. Uh, and then I, I knew that it was normal, so okay. I, in my mind, I'm gonna stop doing yeah. it. And then I forgot, you know, I forget. I forgot yeah. that. And, and it was kind of like a process. How old were you when you moved to the US? 19. 19. For me, one of the shocks or culture shock was, you know, in the US, you can't drink till you're 21 versus like in Brazil or Mexico, when 18. You're 12. Eight, well, no, <laughs> 18. You know, going to a club or even having like a glass of wine or anything, you know, 
it's just like you either had to have a fake ID or you just couldn't or you just prayed that they wouldn't ask. So I thought that was that was kind of, I don't know, it was just very foreign because that's not how it was back in my country. You know, we don't we don't have our, our families here. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have your parents. I don't have my parents. Your, your folks are back in Mexico and mine are in a whole different continent, you know. Um, how do you how do you deal with that and what are like some of the struggles that you face? Well, you know, it's been always, it hasn't been easy since the beginning. Um, you know, luckily, you know, my family, they're very, very tight. You know, I talk to my mom and my dad almost every day. And, um, and I feel like that helps. The beginning was tough. The, f the first few years when I moved here, they were very, very difficult, especially without knowing the language, without having money to really live good and stuff like that. Um, but every year it, it just gets better and better and, and my family knows that I'm very happy. I only feel that it got one step more complicated when you and I, we, we, we got together because, you know, people, you know, I think it's very interesting how we have to figure it out, you and I, you know, how to split our time because in reality, we have one month of vacation, that, that's December, because everywhere else uh, in November we still have a few things here and there, maybe we can squeeze one week here or yeah. two weeks, but like straight I would say December, and then we have to split that time between your family, which right now we're lucky that they're only in Brazil, but just two years ago your mom was in Holland, in Holland. Yeah. so your mom in Holland back then, so Brazil, for example, Mexico, we like have, everywhere. We have the off week right in June or whenever it is. And so one, one sort of dilemma that we face every year, especially only having one weekend off is, you know, you'd love to go back to Mexico to see your, your parents and yeah. your sisters. And then I obviously want to take that time to go to Brazil and see my family. And, and then we have the same dilemma at the end of the year. And, you know, you'd love for me to come to Mexico and spend time I mean, with you. And, and I would love for you to come and spend time with my family. And so we have to like a, split our time so, yeah, and, and I mean, organize ourselves. It's always, it's always a discussion. Yeah. It's always a discussion because, because uh, it's very difficult to do everything. Yeah. And I mean, let's be honest, if you, can, if you have to pick, you pick Brazil. And if I have to pick, I pick Mexico. So we have to kind of like make or compromises to, to be able to, to be together and split your time. But it's not easy, you know, it's not easy. I mean, it would be way easier if our families were here in the United States. Can you mind yeah. how easy things would yeah. be? Emma did a great job. Emma slept the whole time. Pepper. Pepper.